Jesus appeared to me and he was sad, but he's not sad. I don't like these pictures of Jesus look like a Holocaust victim. That's not the Jesus you're going to see when you step into heaven. I'll tell you the Jesus you'll see when you step into heaven. Remember Akiana, the little girl that got caught up in heaven? Look at the Jesus she painted. That's, what you, that's the one you'll see when you step into heaven. You won't see some sad, hollow-eyed. No, he's the happiest man ever lived. But he appeared to me and he was sad. I mean, he's standing right like that and he was sad. He said, Bobby, my people don't like to talk to me. He said, the least attended service in any church is prayer meeting. But then he said, I'm going to give you a phrase that will turn prayer from a drudgery to a delight, from a duty to a desire. And he said it with a twinkle in his eye. I said, God, I want it. I want you to give me a phrase that will change people's paradigm about prayer. And here's what he said. You tell my people what true prayer is. He said, true prayer is an audience with the king. So he wrote the book, Audience with the King. Wow. Listen, John 16, 24. John 16, 24, that's in the red part of the Bible. Jesus said, up until now, you've not asked. Ask now, and you'll get what you're asking, so your heart will be happy. Why now? 2 Corinthians 6, 2. Now is an acceptable time, a time of assured welcome, a time God will hear you and help you. God wants to answer prayer, 1 John 5, 14. This is the what? Confidence we have in Him. If we'll ask Him anything according to His Word, we know that He hears us. If we know that He hears us, we're totally confident we're going to get what we're asking. He that comes to God must believe, number one, he is. Number two, he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If you're talking to God not expecting an answer, they lock people up for that. <laughs> talking to somebody you can't see, you know. He that comes to God must believe he is. He's a prayer in God. So we wrote a book about prayer. Boy, Heidi, in here we deal, deal a whole thing about the altar of incense. Whew. When you pray, your prayers are so special. When they come up before God, God catches your prayers in a golden censer. Hand your prayers to an angel. And one day, God will mix his fire with your prayers and hurl them back to earth. And here we talk about what happens when that happens. Lightnings and thunderings, rumblings and roarings. Boy, listen. Anyway, prayer. Prayer really does work. It's the most powerful weapon we have. While we're talking about weapons... The other day the Lord said, uh, I, I, I don't hear much being taught about a very useful weapon. I, I said, uh, okay, what weapon is that? He said, the weapon of peace. Romans 16, 20. Romans 16, 20, Romans 16, 20 said, the God of peace who will crush Satan under your feet. Wow, that's, that's why the devil tries to keep us chaotic because he knows if we get in peace, we're going to have power. How do we get in peace? Isaiah 26, 3. That will keep him in what? Perfect, Perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. We've got to have an attitude of gratitude. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Have an attitude of gratitude and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and your mind. Only place in the scripture it says tranquility of soul. It, it, meditate upon the things of God. Focus on the things of God. The devil will do everything he, had, he can to disturb you and distract you. But just stay focused. Just stay in peace. One of the best things to do while you're seeking God is Matthew 6, 6. Matthew 6, 6 says, get in the quietest room of your house. Shut the door. We despise silence. I'm in an airport every week. Ain't nobody talking to nobody there on the phone. It'll, little bitty things. You know? They used to have a pacifier. Now they got a cell phone. I've seen kids on the couch going, I'm on the couch. Me too. We're losing verbal skills. I think I'm just going to be a little honest. I'm jealous. I, I use the, t I go, I am here. They go, I, I, you know, they can just, you know, like, have you seen them? Oh, man. I was letting Siri do my typing. Oh, Lord. Honest, it, it, I, I, I would just say it and then send it off. I mean, to famous people. I'm talking about leaders of nations, famous people. My son that works for us, Sean, he said, Daddy, you better check your emails. You're sending me some crazy stuff. I did me a trial run. This is my first trial run where I'm understanding how. Silly Siri could be. 
Bob Jones was living then. Bob and I were great friends, so I, I'd had a very vivid dream. So here's my, here's my text, text to uh, Bob. Hey, Bob, I had a very serious dream last night. Give me a call. I punched Siri up. Here's what Siri wrote. Hey, Bob, I think I have head lice. There ain't no telling what I sent to people. You know, good Lord. You know, famous people, not rednecks, famous people. Yeah. Wow. This automation, we better watch it. I got a talking thermostat at the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, my wife's name Carolyn, so I go, hey, Carolyn. Yes. It's the thermostat. <laughs> Listen. That gal will start in the middle of the night, you know. Yes. I said nothing. Go to bed, you know. I may, I may have to cap her, you know, just, I'm not talking about my wife, I'm talking about the talking thermostat. You, but it does work good, you can set it from anywhere on earth. I got a car that sent me an email. Yeah, my car sent me an email. We, you remember when they used to, Dick Tracy used to talk on a watch? Adam Smart talked off the bottom of his shoe. We're just about there, I guess. But anyway, what I want us to do, let's use all of those automated things to win the gospel, to win the world with the gospel. One of the greatest things that's going to happen, somebody's going to take the Avatar movie, the mechanics of the Avatar movie. They're going to take the Bible stories and animate it and put it on these virtual reality goggles. It'll be the greatest tool the seminary's ever had. They'll take the things from the Bible and animate it with the mechanics of that Avatar movie, put it on the virtual reality, and it'll train them just like that. It'll go through two gates, the eye gate and the ear gate. So anyway, that'll be great. A lot of stuff to talk about, but that's why we're here, just to tell you that you're in the kingdom for such a time as this. Boy, the, 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 the Lord told me, said, I want you to study David's mighty men. Now, some of the greatest warriors in the Bible are women. There's one unsung hero, bless her heart, Esther. Don't you love Esther? Whoa! Now, let me just paraphrase Esther for you. Here's what, here's what Esther says. I'm going to do what God gave me life to do even if it kills me. They kind of polish it up a little in the Bible. If I perish, I perish. Have you all figured this out? We don't get out of this alive. We better make this thing count for the Lord. Don't you think? Why hold back? Why hold back? We, listen, now's the time to let it all out. And so David's mighty man, good gracious. One of my favorites in David's mighty man is Shaman. It says his job that day was to guard a bean field. A bean field. And it says all the of armies of Saul, when they saw the enemy, they fled. They ran off. There's one dude out in the bean field, Shaman. Shamoth means God that's here and there. And old Shamoth takes his, takes his weapon and killed 800 people in one day. Let me ask you this. Every time I read that, I think, oh, man. I know people won't even fight for their families. They won't fight for their nation. They won't fight for their church. And here's Shamoth laid it out in a bean field. 